issues are, Mr. Bowen. Okay, so first one um, I wanted to address before cross began. Uh, Ms. Manuel has indicated that she wants to cross-examine the defense, the witness about what she was wearing during her examination. I knew that was going to come up, and I know the reason they're going to do it, I would guess, is because the subjective nature of the personality of the examiner has something to do with the PCLR. Is that what you're going to use it for? Um, I don't believe that I would be able to make that argument until Sir rebuttal because we have obviously been able been trying to stay away from the PCLR. Um, Okay, so but I, the issue is that she um, indicated in giving her experience and her training on why she, um, as part of why she is capable and reliable in these evaluations, is that she's worked in these facilities so long and she's had that opportunity. So it certainly goes to the fact that if you had, in fact, been working in these hospitals, you know the environment, you know the appropriate dress code, you would not have been asked to cover up or leave. Um, she certainly bolstered her experience on direct. Um, it, there's also would be testimony that she indicates that John was deceptive um, and evasive. Um, there is also a possibility or a likely reason that of his behavior being affected because she was intentionally trying to distract him and um, was obviously creating a distraction by her dress. Well, didn't she have to leave and get a shirt? Yeah, they said she had to cover up or leave. But he, she didn't have any contact with him. No, this was about three hours. It was not. It was about. It was a few hours in. It's not until oh, the attorney see. happens to walk by a screen. The attorney for the hospital walks by a screen, sees the video of her in there, and then interrupts the evaluation to come say she she needs to cover up. So it certainly goes to her professionalism, um, her experience in a hospital setting that she indicated she's worked in for a number of years on direct. Okay, let me say this. A woman's choice of attire, their hairstyle, all of that stuff, I don't think is really relevant to anything we hold on. We have lawyers that come to court regularly here that could be criticized for their dress. And that they're, a lot of them are highly professional and good lawyers. I don't disagree. And I think so if it was I done don't. in a different setting, I, I agree that it may not have any relevancy. But she has specifically testified that she it has her training and experience and is, and is um, familiar with working in these settings. She knows how things are done in these settings. And so for her to say, I know how things are done in the hospital. I know when they increase medication for certain things. I know when somebody is, says they're sleeping more than they're really sleeping. I know all of these things because my experiences. It is absolutely then fair game to rebut that her knowledge and experience and knowing what happens in these hospitals to say that she entered a facility completely inappropriately dressed. It is a it is a hospital facility for people that are there forensically, a lockdown facility. If she has work experience in jails, if she has work experience in hospitals, and if she's testifying about how she knows how those things are done, and then she did her evaluation in a park, or she, what, I mean, but then I agree, it would be off limits. But her experience is that, she, I mean, how many times did she say, in these places, this is what they do? I'm not gonna let her be a task for her dress, and I understand what you say the relevance of it is, and I don't necessarily disagree, but I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm not. It's not happening. And it also yeah. would have, there's, um, there's also potential testimony that there was an effect of that, how it would affect John. And so she well, that's has, a whole different thing. And she has given her hypotheses on why he may have, why he acted a certain way. And so if there's a, just as likely hypotheses that he is not comfortable around her, I certainly think that that's relevant at this point. I don't need to say, I mean, I think the issue is that you entered a, you, were dressed in a way that you were that you were you were told you had to either put on more clothes or leave the facility, and I, that's I don't need to get into. Judge, can I respond? You don't need to. I'm not going to allow that. Now, I, I suppose if it comes out in Sir rebuttal that there was John's problem was her dress, I don't think I would preclude that from happening. But I'm not going to allow you to cross-examine her 
on what happened at the state hospital because of the way she was dressed by the night. Can I move on to the next issue, Judge? Yes. So the next issue is the defense wants to play clips of Dr. Lazaro's interview, her evaluation with the defendant. I don't know what the relevance of these specific clips uh, is to this particular case. I would agree that if it's impeachment to something she just said, then they may be relevant. But when I talk to defense about it, they're telling me that these clips are best evidence. I don't see where that's the case at all. So at this point, we're objecting to them just playing clips of her interview with the defendant. That's not best evidence. They can cross her if she said something different. It, it, but the video itself is hearsay. I'm not going to limit them that way. I'm going to let them do that. OK, anything else? No, no, those are the only issues. So, okay. Are we ready for the jury? I think so. I mean, you can make an objection at some point. I'm not saying they can play nine hours of interviews or something that's clearly not relevant, but I'm not going to say right now they can't do that. Okay. So, okay. so we could still make a specific objection absolutely. during the video? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Thanks to the members. There was, all, there was also the other issue was... Uh, it would be foolish for me to say that they can't cross-examine her using her interview. Right, no, I agree that you can't. I just and want to make this sure. This is actually the best evidence of it. It's right here on the tape. Right, I just want to make sure there's a legal basis for them to do it, not just press well, play. Well, I'm assuming, well, then you've got to make an objection as it's being played. Okay, okay, what else? Well, the, the only other issue that we would have had, I think we've addressed, we, we didn't want them to play anything before the evaluation started. They've agreed to that, so I think that's not an issue. Okay. Okay. Thank Anything you else? We need one quick second here, just making sure we're on the same page for what needs to go up on the screen. Okay. Well, can the jury, let's, let's bring them up to the door and hopefully that we can have it. We can reposition right for the video. Go anywhere you like. Oh. Hold on, Judge. We need to like now. I have the long, so I get to play a different thing. Okay. Hold up. We're not ready just yet. The first clip is not on the. If we just have a few minutes to download that one. No, no. Or.
Yes, ma'am. Also. Okay. All Dr. Lazare. Good morning. All right. Now, you were talking about the evaluation um, you did of Mr. Johncha, correct? Yes. That occurred over two days? Yes. Tell us the dates of that again, if you could. First date was October, October 24th, 2017, and the second one was May 15th, 2018. Okay. And both of those evaluations were video recorded, correct? Yes. Okay. You've been provided a copy of the video and the transcript of that video, correct? Not this, not this video, no. Okay, you've been provided a, the, well, let's talk about that a little bit. The way, it, when we went to the evaluation, um, Mr. John Chuck's attorneys were present, as were uh, these prosecutors, correct? Yes. And both sides brought a video camera set up on the same table, correct? Yes. Okay. And so... You have maybe seen the state's version or the defense's version, but you haven't seen two different versions, correct? No, I like this one better. Okay. And the version that you have seen, um, or you would agree, though, that the cameras were sitting on the same table, they were recording the same evaluation? I believe so. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to ask you, so... You had given the state, um, on direct, you had gone through some statements that Mr. John Chuck made um, Yes. A, about 24 hours before this happened, right? Yes. Okay. Now, well, let's just go ahead first. What, can we? So, yeah. <laughs> so this is October 24th, about 1... 118 p.m. Correct. Yes. Does this look like a fair and accurate depiction of where the video took place? Are you able to see? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just let me. Ask, is there going to be a lot of testimony about the video? Because I'm going to move, but I don't want to. This one is a fairly lengthy clip. The others will be shorter. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> How is that? I have no idea. Can we start over? You don't remember. Oh, you guys here? No. No. We made the room dark. Dark. No. Wow. What are these buttons? It says, you just muted it. Oh. Please don't mute my thing. Everybody can hear. Um, should we move it closer? I can't move it. Can your honor hear it? Barely. It's not too loud. Can, the, can our court reporter hear it? It could be louder. Okay. Your, can we get a little speaker? Your honor, give me about 30 seconds. I can make it louder. Okay. Yeah, can we approach while we're doing that? Yes.
Yeah, that's not gonna work. We can try and play it through the core. On that TV? Yep. Okay. Use this as the core. It's possible to run both. I mean, I can be playing, but it'll push the sound out. Probably still watch it through that monitor. No. no. But we can use the courtroom equipment to try and play and see if that'll boost the audio. In order to put it through that television, it's going to take just a moment because we have to move the equipment over to the council table. So if There just a couple questions while he's getting that set up. Sure. Um, prior to getting started, or during your opening or introductory statements to Mr. John Chuck, um, you did not tell him that you didn't tell him he shouldn't guess at answers, right? No, I, I didn't specifically say don't guess at answers. No. You didn't tell him that he should try to only tell you what he specifically recalls, right? No, I, I didn't give every specifier as to how he should think about when he answers me. I just asked him to talk to me truthfully. And you didn't explain to him, I know that now you may make this connection and have this belief, but I want you to try to take me back to what your mind was at then, correct? No, I asked him just what I said there. I want you to talk to me about 24 hours before what happened. Okay. And we're a couple hours in at this point, right? You started about 845? Yeah, well, that's a lot more than a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, this is one now, one, one something, right? Okay. So.
but she knew that wasn't a possibility, a real possibility. I mean, she had half of us do whatever, but she wasn't going to take her. Yeah, exactly. But this was just her being dramatic, right? Yeah. Because you guys had sort of a dramatic relationship, I feel like. Yeah, it was very dramatic. So this was just another part of that. So why did you take that as a real threat? Because she had a way to get to her guy because she didn't have her boyfriend's name. Guy kissed her. And um, he had his... I never thought I was being like that until he said that, and then that just sounds funny. Guy kisser, you know. But anyway, so what did that have to do with like how it turned negative? Um, I was afraid that he would be able to come and get her with Michelle if she did drive. Okay. So you again didn't think Michelle was a threat because she really literally couldn't drive to even pick Phoebe up from the school. Right, and I wanted the drama to start so that it stopped. That's why I was giving the attorney. It's either do shared custody or give me full custody so my mom can adopt her in case anything ever happens. So your mom mom was up in line to adopt her? She would have been. She had completely changed her life. She had a new car and everything. She still does. from uh, Michelle Lewin and she got uh, cards and her name and everything. So your mom, the, the plan of your mom getting full custody or whatever was like way down the line if something yeah. was going to happen, but it wasn't anything that was going to happen in the immediate future. But you felt that it was more of a threat because Michelle seemed to be more stable. She had this guy that could actually drive, and so they could actually get Fiji. When before, it wasn't even a possibility. Right. Okay. So then you went to the attorney because this is becoming more real. And then you went, that was the, the day you started to give her the 400 bucks. Okay. And at that time, that's when you asked her if she could read the Bible or whatever, because she had this accent and she was, she was like, oh, I can't read it. Yeah. Because she's in it, or what's her, I think she's Swedish, and her last name's Taurus, isn't it? She's married, though. Oh, okay, so she, she could have been, but she said, I cannot read this. Yeah. And that was the end of it. Right. What was your feeling about her, like, when you left? She, you had asked her, like, to let, you know, watch TV or something like that. Yeah, I had a, it was really weird for me to do. Right. I was going to the church. I was before the church, and I asked her if I could be right there with Kristen, the assistant. Okay. And she was like, no. And she's like, are you kidding me? We're working. Exactly. <laughs> Not as a babysitter, but that's like the assistant working in them. Okay, so they just said no, and then she was like, okay, and then you just took the and you went to the church. Yeah, and they told her to be back for the day. To give them the rest of the money, the hundred bucks. Okay. And so you're planning to go to the church already knew which one you were going to, or? Yeah. Why did she call around? Why did she call? Why weren't you just doing this?
Did you guys talk about it in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it was the day. Yeah. You already sort of had a plan. I'm going to go to the yeah. attorney, drop that money off, get everything going, then go to the church, figure out the same with the Bible, and then, so you sort of follow that plan. Right. So you go to the church, and then what happens? Um, I started to follow the Bible. I want to stop right there real quick. Um, so John tells you that he's hearing that um, voice is telling him that he's the Pope at that point, right? Yes. And you do you ask him a follow-up question. He says, so no longer about you going to hell or anything like that. Now you're just the Pope, and that's the farthest thing you can get, right? Something Are you to that effect. Question? Yeah, you said something to that effect. Yes. And he actually starts to answer you there and says, so that we just saw, right? I don't know. Okay. Um, in order for him to, and we'll push, well, I guess we can play for a second. We will push play. Can we rewind maybe like two seconds? Sorry. It's like 30 seconds for QC. Oh.
You would agree that that is one instance that John was proceeding to elaborate about your question and you stopped him from answering. Oh, I don't know that that's necessarily how I would see it. I mean, I'm trying to get certain questions answered and I believe that I give, give reasonable pauses between every question and typically when I ask this question, the person's just saying all of this without me having to ask question after question after question. So he could have been elaborating, elaborating I don't know, but he has plenty of time to elaborate over all the amount of time. So Okay, can, so you, your testimony then is what we just watched there was not you cutting him off? I don't feel like I was cutting him off. Okay. I believe that I was asking, based upon what he had just told me, more clarification about what he just told me. Okay. Do you have a religion at all? Do you raise
there was not even anybody to go talk to. Mm -hmm.
questions, or at least it was my impression that they had asked you some questions. Tell her because she wouldn't know that information unless she told her. 
one that you were reading, reading to the baby, or that was after you were reading? Okay, so you guys went there later in the evening then. So this was like maybe 8.39 versus 6.37, because you were reading the baby at 8, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is around 9. Okay, and so then by 10 o'clock, you're saying, Phoebe, so you get back to the house. And at 10 o'clock, Phoebe's still up. Now, weren't you, weren't you dead? Because I'm already there in the house. Couldn't you have left Phoebe and, like, did your Romeo thing with Naomi, like, without Phoebe? Or why was Phoebe there with you? So she could play with that thing. Okay, so you were really thinking you were going to go there for dinner, like, Phoebe. Yeah, and so usually, you know, like, I, I had visited her with you before. Oh, really? Yeah, and I cooked it.
saw that and seen those two things go together. Mm-hmm. And so then, what was the next thing? What happened then? Um, I understand there got the
really fast, and then next thing you know, you're getting ripped out of the car from the window, even though you have your seatbelts on. Right. Okay. And then what happened next? Um, I got uh, back in the back of the car. Was it a cop car? Yeah. And what was happening at that point? Did you say anything? Was anything going on? No, they came and sat in the front of the seat. Dr. Lazaro. Um, okay. So, dur um, I'm done with a little bit, Judge. Oh, from the video. During John's rendition of well, you asked him about 24 hours preceding this, correct? Yes. During that time, in response to what happened 24 hours, you got information about Christmas, right? Yes. You got information about Thanksgiving, right? I believe so, yes. Um, fair to say he was d did not stay at the day around, right? Right, that's not atypical. Okay. And there were a few things that he said that were obviously inconsistent with the facts of the case, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, he was very insistent that that day when he went to see Genevieve Torres, he had paid $400, correct? Yes. <laughs> you would agree that Genev there's no record and Genevieve Torres indicates there's no was no money paid to her that day, correct? I don't I don't remember that. I can look into her thing. I know she has like a bill in there. that I have, I have one invoice, and on there it, it has a payments received $400, but it doesn't exactly say what the time of it is. It just says payments received $400. Okay, so fair to say we should rely on Genevieve Torres's testimony as far as whether that was paid or not? Well, I'm looking at this. It says $400, so. <clears throat> so, but as far as whether that was actually paid, since there's no date, we should rely on Genevieve Torres's testimony? Well, uh, Do you think you know better than Ms. Torres if she was paid that day? No, I don't know better than okay. Ms. Torres, but I don't remember exactly. I, I wasn't focused on the $400 gotcha. when she was talking. Okay. Yes. And um, he indicated to you that, um, that Mickey also heard this Bible knocking, right? Yes, he did say that. 
fair to say there's nothing to suggest Mickey heard this Bible knocking, right? I have no idea about um, her. I wasn't able to speak with her. Okay. Now, certainly, if other people are hearing this Bible knocking, that would make it seem real versus being a psychotic symptom, correct? Yes. Okay. John indicated that um, there was some concern about um, Michelle wanting to take Phoebe because Guy Kisser had a car now, right? Yes. Um, and what he had indicated, though, was that he really just wanted all he he wanted the drama to stop. He didn't want there to be drama over Phoebe, correct? He said, yeah, he said that first he said he did, and then he said he didn't real fast, so I don't know if it was a correction or what, but yeah. He said that he was trying to get the attorney to do shared custody or to give him full custody so that his mother would be able to adopt Phoebe if anything happened, correct? Yes. You would agree that both of those are inconsistent with John trying to keep Phoebe all to himself, correct? That, that statement, yes, is inconsistent with that. Okay. When you spoke to Michelle, <coughs> she was afraid about moving for lunch, so whenever is a good place to stop. We could, we could, no, that's fine. That's okay. fine. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a recess until one for lunch. Um, Thank you for your patience, cooperation, participation.